The topic is um, historicity of the crucifixion. This is part two of our rebuttal series to the claims made by E.F. Dawa regarding the historicity of the crucifixion. Please make sure to watch part one where we address their first three claims and prove those to be fallacious and built on weak foundations. Here is part two addressing their claims regarding the witness of Josephus and a brief reasoning as to why Christians reject certain so-called gospels. Uh, so what the Christian believes uh, is a powerful point on their side is the fact that non-Christian sources support this idea. I'll give you the three names. What, I, what I'd like to do if we could uh, is explain why the Christian would bring this person forward and how is it sorry, judged according to the historical um, mm -hmm criteria you know the method of testing history mm -hmm. so um we'll start with the most famous one which is flavius josephus the ancient source that is most helpful for both jews and christians would be the works of flavius josephus who was a jewish historian who was born in jerusalem four years after jesus crucifixion and he writes his great history of the jews a little bit after the time that the four gospels are written uh, before the first century is over, twice he mentions Jesus. Ananus thought he had a favorable opportunity because Festus was dead and Albinus was still on the way. And so he convened the judges of the Sanhedrin and brought before them the brother of Jesus, the one called Christ, whose name was James and certain others, and accusing them of having transgressed the law, delivered them up to be stoned. So he mentions Jesus also earlier in Antiquities Book 18, and it is a very fair outside view of who Jesus was. At this time, there was a wise man who was called Jesus, and his conduct was good, and he was known to be virtuous. And many people from among the Jews and the other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die. But those who had become his disciples did not abandon their loyalty to him. They reported that he had appeared to them three days after his crucifixion, and that he was alive. Accordingly, they believed that he was the Messiah, concerning whom the prophets have recounted wonders. Very fair outside view of who Jesus was. The first century Jewish historian Flavius Josephus wrote about Jesus' crucifixion in his book Antiquities of the Jews, 18 dated around 85 AD this passage is known as the testimonium Flavium and says that a man named Jesus drew a crowd of people who listened to his teachings and was killed by Roman crucifixion under Pontius Pilate and even as even Minton puts it this is historical evidence for the crucifixion of Jesus coming from a source with no theological axe to grind now some people object that this passage has been interpolated by Christian scribes because of the use of certain words they believe Josephus would probably not have used. However, the majority of scholars and historians hold the position it was only partially interpolated or that only certain phrases may have been inserted by a Christian scribe. But this is not at all problematic because the majority of scholars and historians recognize even when you remove the obvious Christian additions, the passage remains completely coherent. Here is the testimonium Flavium with the Christian phrases and words removed. Quote, now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as receiving the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of principal men amongst us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, and the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct at this day." Unquote. As we can see, the flow of thought isn't bothered at all by the removal of the Christian additions and remains coherent, and it is strong early evidence of the historicity of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth is one of the best attested facts in ancient history. And I speak as an ancient historian. There are certain other things like the, the murder of Julius Caesar, the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, uh, all sorts of other things which actually we know pretty certainly and which no ancient historian denies. The crucifixion itself is one of the best bits of evidence because in the ancient world, 
the word cross or crucifixion was almost like a swear word. You wouldn't want to say it in polite company or in front of your grandmother because it was so horrible and barbaric and disgusting and bodies hanging on crosses being eaten by rats and vermin and birds and so on. You just shudder and look away. And yet the Christians made the cross the symbol from the very beginning of their movement because for them it was the sign of the love of God. Without something like the actual death of Jesus, that cultural shift is impossible to explain. Well, interestingly, uh, at least from the extant or still surviving manuscripts, specifically Tacitus and Josephus, those manuscripts only exist after the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it starts around in the 9th century CE. The date of extent or surviving copies of these works has no bearing on the universal recognition that these records come from very early. For example, not only did Eusebius in the 4th century quote portions from Josephus supporting the early existence of his works, but Josephus mentions other biblically relevant occurrences that are not in dispute. He also records facts about Roman emperors and speaks of Caesar Augustus, including his connections with Herod the Great, and also mentions details about Tiberius, Nero, and Toninus Felix, and also mentions Festus's rule after Felix, see Antiquities 20.89. The fact that Festus replaced Felix, according to Josephus, is in perfect agreement with Luke's account in Acts 24.27. These type of accurate details support the works of Josephus and Tacitus as reliable early attestation to the death of Jesus. The first Christian in antiquity, in ancient, in, at the ancient time, to actually quote uh, Josephus would have been the church father Eusebius in the 4th century. So even when you had uh, uh, critical people like Lucius and Celsus mocking the Christians for their beliefs, they never actually make the claim that this is a fact in history. It's just something that they mention that Christians believe in. So it's a bit interesting that they appeal to these people when to be sure the earliest Christians did not. To be sure, the earliest Christians actually did not appeal to Tacitus or Josephus. There's no reason why Christians would normally quote or mention Josephus or Tacitus' work in regard to the events that took place. The best credible testimony would be that coming from those who walked and talked with Jesus or those who were students of his apostles. Thus, we would normally expect information regarding the biblical narrative and the crucifixion to be drawn from these people, the early church fathers and these sources, the writings of the New Testament. Sources like the Muratorian Fragment, which dates to the middle of the second century, is a list of an early canon. The Muratorian Fragment. This list dates back to about 170 AD, but the list was only discovered in the year 1700 in the Ambrosian Library in Milan by Lodovico Antonio Moratori, who was a historian, priest, and scholar. And the Moratorian Fragment is written in Latin, there is consensus amongst scholars that it was translated into Latin and that the original language was Greek and that it was originally written in about 170 AD. And on the second page it mentions that Luke was the third book of the gospel and that the book of John was the fourth, which means these gospels were already in circulation. Also from the writings of Irenaeus, Papias, Tertullian, and Clement, we have multiple authors in different regions all telling us the same story. So in light of this, We'd expect early Christians to normally appeal to these sources for information, but that doesn't mean we'd also expect to find some mention of Jesus' death and or crucifixion written by early historians, in which case we do. And this mention of this event is almost anonymous in historical writings. And let's take the claim of Josephus, for example. If Josephus fully and truly believed that Christ was died and resurrected and all these miracles were done in his name, why did he never actually become a Christian? So you have the irony of Christians appealing to this man, saying he knows the crucifixion happened, but this man is also saying, I am not a Christian believer. So there's this dichotomy which exists, which I don't think the Christians fully appreciate. If Christ was crucified, and this is a fact as you believe it to be, again, I beg you, why did Josephus, who traveled the entire land, he was a Jew, but later became pagan. He was not a Jew that became Christian. Having studied the works of Josephus, this passage in particular, I'm sure Mr. Ijaz was well aware of this fact, and it's why he was unable to raise a solid negative charge against Josephus. At best, he only raises up a hypothetical question. Well, if he believed Jesus was crucified, then why didn't he become a Christian? 
This is the best argument they have against Josephus, and it's an extremely weak one, and communicates how desperate Muslims are to find any fault with anyone or any works that testify to the crucifixion. But then again, when you have almost all of history giving a harmonious testimony of the crucifixion versus 40 Arabic words that disagrees with all of history, I guess their desperation is understandable. So we have Josephus testifying to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and we have the majority of the body of scholarship affirming the validity of this passage. Now, in regard to Mr. Ijaz's question, Christians don't have to answer it because Josephus does that for him. As we see in his autobiography and the Jewish War 3.383 through 398, his switch from Judaism to Romanism was not a free choice without obligation as Ijaz implies, but it was the result of his desire to live after being defeated by the Romans in Jotapata. It was either surrender or die. So how convenient for Ijaz to leave that part out. So why did he switch sides? Because the Romans were ready to kill him and he did not want to die. And why didn't he become a Christian? Probably because Nero wasn't the nicest person to reign and he did not want to die. Um, so what the Christian believes uh, is a powerful point on their side is the fact that non-Christian sources support this idea. And, and John, this is absolutely bedrock belief among historians, including skeptics and atheists. Gerd Ludemann of Vanderbilt University, atheist, says this is, this is absolutely true historically. We know this to be true. John Dominic Cross, an extreme liberal, uh, says it is true. And even James Tabor, who is a professor who is an atheist, uh, concedes that this actually took place, that Jesus was killed by crucifixion. Uh, we have five sources outside the Bible, in addition to the four Gospels, that all confirm that Jesus was dead when he was taken down from the cross.